Today we're going to be ranking addictions based on how fun they are. And to kick off this list, I'm going to start with the timeless classic, that is gambling. Gambling is perhaps one of the most prevalent addictions out there. It's also one of the most rewarding ones. One of the best parts of gambling is that it doesn't even require skill. It's all just based on arbitrary luck. It gives you such high thrilling amounts of dopamine and you don't even have to do anything. You can simply just press a button and watch your money melt away. But that slim slim 0.001% chance that you hit a jackpot, that's what we love gambling for. Deep Newell, how you light up the sky. <laughs> It's so fun to flex your winnings on your friends. That facade of feeling lucky just makes you feel better than everyone else. And the best part is it comes in many different flavors. We have CSGO cases. We have Madden packs. I have 39,000 Madden points for our first pack opening of the year. Just give me some, give me Ramadre. All right, Jonathan Allen 84 isn't bad. I'll take a Jonathan Allen 84. We have card game packs. I've got 15 Modern Horizon 3 collector's boxes here for Magic. And if those are too complex for you, we have the classic press a button and a flashy animation plays. This one's quite popular with the boomers. And for those that want to roleplay and act like there's some skill involved, we have poker and blackjack. Gambling is beautiful. It shows true resilience in one's character. 99% of gamblers never hit it big. But the 1% who keep trying and dreaming and believing, those are the ones that truly hit it big. And it's just beautiful to see. Words can't describe how inspirational it is to watch the unbreakable human spirit continue to waste away their money by pressing a button in hopes of getting something that's shiny. Me personally, my favorite flavor of gambling is opening Pokemon card packs. Papa needs his cardboard. Which you can find documented on my second channel. Link in the description, please subscribe. I need an excuse to keep gambling. So for all of those reasons, I'm gonna have to put gambling in S tier. There's nothing better than hitting it big and feeling like you accomplished something, even though you did absolutely nothing. The next addiction we have is gaming. Now gaming is going to be a doozy to rank because there are levels to gaming addiction. You know, at, at the higher echelon of gaming addiction, it's just very disgusting, unsightly, something, something you just don't want to see. Stank ass, fat ass, neckbeard virgins. You can't even see their desk because it's covered in Dorito crumbs and monster cans. Several hundreds of liters. You can say my G Fuel addiction has taken over. If you've ever been to a gaming tournament, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. However, I won't deny that gaming itself is very fun. I too have fallen victim to playing a game until 3am. There have been periods where I haven't showered in a bit, and I was just grinding a game all day for like a week straight. I'm ashamed to admit that fact, and for that reason I'm gonna have to put it in B tier. While it is very fun, the hard truth is, it doesn't provide you with any real value like gambling does. <laughs> Gaming doesn't give you money, and it also turns you into a stinky fat monster the deeper you dive into the gaming rabbit hole. Next up we have the good old classic, classic, substance abuse. Now back in the day I used to be quite the connoisseur of a if you catch my drift. I've also dabbled with the funky fermented juice, but nothing too crazy, you know, I've never been uh, quote, cool enough to be around that crowd. And uh, also, I, I'm too broke to afford the bougie stuff. So I've never really upgraded my palette, so I don't know how much weight my opinion holds here. But honestly, I, I think it's kind of mid compared to everything else we have on this list. So I'm gonna have to put it in C tier. It also brings out the worst in some people. And it's also pretty dangerous in, uh, in high amounts. These things are fun with the right people in controlled amounts, but you know, to really be crutching on these things is kind of, uh, it's kind of depressing, I'm not gonna lie. I'd rather be gambling. <laughs> Next up we have shopping. Retail therapy is very real guys. Who doesn't love buying some shiny new object to fill the void in your heart? I for one like to buy copious amounts of plastic molded into my favorite superheroes. Clothes that show off my favorite pop culture references. <laughs>
participating in capitalism helps me feel less empty. Now I've never been Mr. Big Bucks, so I can't just buy anything I want. I have to control myself, so I have enough money to gamble. I also feel like it kind of tapers off at a certain point when you have copious amounts of shit. It kind of just doesn't hit the way it used to when you buy something new. So for that reason, I'm going to have to put it in A tier. Next up we have a... <laughs> I'm gonna have to put this one, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, I'm gonna have to put this one in F tier. This is probably the worst addiction you could ever have. If you're addicted to this, there's probably a lot of things going wrong in your life. After you finish that session, you're just staring at your reflection in the black screen, and that clarity hits you and you're like, what am I doing with my life? That's enough to send a grown man into an existential crisis. And some people take this to the extreme. They have entire rooms dedicated to this shit. They have the audacity to call them goon caves. As if they're like Batman or something. Or those guys who are sending money to girls that they've never met. You see all of these people partaking in that to the extreme. And you think to yourself, I would never want to be like one of them. Those people are actual freaks to society. So that's why I'm putting it in F tier. Next up is the step up from zoinking your shit. I'm of course talking about... And for this one, you know, this is a, this is an easy A tier for me. I mean, honestly, when you're in the position where you can just do it a lot, why, I mean, why not? The sad reality is though, most people will never be in the position to experience such a thing. One glaring downside I'll have to add is that some people are just way too into it to the point where they'll just pick anything that's breathing. And like, come on guys, like, no. no. Like we're not, we're not like, like who's 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 picking this bro at least have some standards next up we have brain rot short form content edge edge have you ever been on an edging streak edge edge do they keep you in a state of edging edge edge when you're not performing your edging now i am ashamed to admit that i have also been a victim of doom scrolling ingesting high amounts of brain rot can cause permanent brain damage. Sometimes I find it hard to focus on a topic when there's not a clip of subway surfers or family guy next to it. We can already see the repercussions in our society today. I mean, just look at Gen Alpha. They're out here spewing nonsense, talking about Giat Ohio Riz. Like what, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Now brain rot isn't a new concept. It's been around for years. I mean, my form of brain rot growing up was YouTube poop. The only difference is my generation wasn't out here quoting fucking YouTube poops. And at least those videos were like 5 minutes long, you know, they weren't like 30 second clips. Nowadays you can get your brain rot to go. It's anywhere and everywhere. Every social media platform. And they're all bite sized so you can just consume a shit ton of them in such a small amount of time. The amount of 30 second clips that you can fit into 5 minutes, that's just too much brain rot for one person to handle. So that's why I have to put brain rot down, down at the bottom because it's just not fun, you know? That's like saying being stupid is fun. I've outgrown this phase in my life. I'm an intellectual man. I only interest myself in intellectual activities, like gambling. Next up we have food. And uh, you know, I, personally I don't understand overeating. Um, just, just don't eat it. Like it's, cause eating is just a basic human function. Like you, you eat when you're hungry. So why are you eating when you're not hungry? It's like saying you're addicted to breathing air, like you, you need to breathe air to function. And you know what overeating does to your body? It turns you into this. Now I'm no detective, but I would assume that, you know, every fat person would like to not be fat. So like if they had an option to not be fat, I'm pretty sure they would take it. I mean, just look at the celebrities that lost weight. So anyone who claims that they're proud to be fat is a big fat liar. I can't imagine being out of breath from walking five steps to the fridge as a fun way to live your life. I'm gonna put this in F tier for fat. And that's my list, you know, if you disagree with me, I genuinely don't care.